So today I'm going to show you how to make a roll top backpack. It's quite a small backpack when it's finished. I'm just going to talk you through the pieces you're going to need. So you're going to need some webbing, two D-rings, two sliders, two squares three and a half inch to cut into half to create triangles, long fastener, mine's 11 inches long, then out of fabric wise you're going to need two pieces that form the front and the back of your bag and on the back they've got Decaville ironed on. You need to follow the instructions um, on the blog for the sizing as you can see the Decaville is not the full width because we're going to pleat in the sides of the bag a bit like a lunch bag. Then you're going to need your top back trim. This is going to hold your strap pieces in place. Four pieces to create your roll top finish. So that's your outer fabric and then your lining fabric. You need two pieces the size of your main bag and I've ironed a uh, fusible fleece onto the back. Not fusible fleece, fusible interfacing onto the back and a piece to create a pocket if you'd like a pocket. So let's get started. We're going to start with the tabs. So to make a tab, cut a three inch piece of webbing, fold it through your D-ring and place it. You've cut your triangles, your triangles by cutting your square pieces in half. So you're going to place it along one side Just a little bit more than half an inch up from the bottom there. And enclose with the second half of the triangle so you've got your right sides of your fabric facing each other. So let's hold that together. So we're going to stitch two sides of the triangle uh, with I guess half an inch half an inch seam allowance and then we're going to trim the corner turn right side out so I just trim the corner and I'm going to turn it right side out Push my corner out. So I'm going to give that a good old press and top stitch my tab along the edge here. So next we're going to place our tabs onto the sides of our bag. So they're going to be two and a half inches up from the bottom, all edges facing each other, tabs facing upwards. I'm just going to hold those in place. Two and a half. So that's with our Decaville running up the middle, essentially. So I'm just going to base those in place. The next step is to create the top handle. I've cut a piece of webbing 11 inches long. So you're going to place this along the top of your back panel. One and a half inches down from the top and five inches in from the side. And you're going to pin it in place. Now we're going to stitch a rectangle and then across in the middle of it. Now this needs to start mm, six eighths of an inch down from the top because this is going to be your seam allowance for your roll top. You need to allow for that. And then we're going to create, we're going to cover these raw edges we're going to cover these raw edges with the top back trim so we need to make sure our stitching is going to be covered by that too. 
So the next step is to create the adjustable straps. I've cut two pieces of webbing. These are 33 inches long because that's literally all I've got. I note for my pattern I used 38 inches the first time. So I'll probably go with that. As you can see, I zigzagged the raw edge of the webbing. I'm going to thread it through the adjustable slider, turn it back on itself by about one and a half inches. And I am going to stitch that with a rectangle with a cross in the middle to secure. And I'm going to do that for both, both adjustable straps for the two sides of the back. So once you've attached your adjustable slider, we are going to, with the raw edge facing us, pass the strap through the D-ring. back through the slider and then we're going to place parallel and next to our upper bag strap and repeat the process of securing with a rectangle and um, cross stitching and then we're going to do the same for the second strap. Now we're going to make the top back trim. So you've got your piece of fabric, you're going to press in a quarter of an inch all the way along. Now if you're not confident about getting a straight pressed edge, I just wanted to show you this tip. I'm just using a piece of card to press against. And you're going to do that both sides of your fabric. So here's our finished back panel with the straps. So we're going to place this over the top and pin in place. So now I'm going to top stitch that to secure along the edges of this top back trim. Next we're going to make the roll top um, panels for the backpack. So you've got four panels. You're going to place the right sides together. So you've got two sets or two pieces of fabric right sides together. We're going to stitch that in place. Once you stitch them together, you're going to press the seam allowance away to one side and you're going to top stitch that seam allowance down. You do that on both panels. That is going to be on the inside of your bag and help give a crisp edge for your roll top neck. So now you've created your roll top panels, you want to sew them to the main bag. So the bit where you've top stitched needs to face the bottom of the bag so that then will be inside the finished bag. As you can see, I've pinned my top handle away so it doesn't get caught when I sew this together. And you can do that for the other side too. So the next step is to attach your fastening. So this is the front of the bag with the bra over top folded down as it will be when it's closed. I'm going to place it centrally allowing my seam allowance at the top here. So I just need to measure and check that my eye has got that in the right position. It has, incredibly. So 
I'm going to hand stitch this in position. I'm going to use a denim thread. Should I not use that one? Change my mind. I'm not going to use a denim thread. I'm going to use this, which is thicker than the same machine thread and more or less tones. So we've hand stitched on our fastening at the bottom of the bag. I'm just going to give it a press here. But we're basically going to join the two sides of the bag together now. Probably off just doing it that way. So fold your straps in. Press your all your seams so these are pressed out nicely. Align. And hand uh, machine stitch along the sides, along the bottom, back up, and uh, do you back stitch at the top of your side seams here. Now you've stitched your seams, we're going to box the corner of the bag. So this is the bottom of the bag here, and this is a side seam. We're going to fold the side seam in. So that the side seam meets the base seam. I'm going to fold the seam allowance open. I'm going to check that with a pin. No, they're not aligned. Let me try that again. That's better. So once you've pinned your seams accurately together, you're going to sew across here in a straight line to box the bag. So I'm just going to mark that with Taylor's chalk. There we go. I'm going to repeat on the other side of the bag as well. And then you can see how that's creating form on the base of the bag. So now we've boxed our corners, we're going to turn the bag the right side out. making sure my corners are pushed out nicely. Right, it's beginning to look a bit like a bag now. So the next step is to put some pleats in the side of this bag, which is where your decaville comes in. And you edge of your decaville you'll be able to feel between your fingers on the side of your bag. So you're going to fold in along the edge of that decaville. And you can do that on the both sides at the front. It's really obvious where to fold. You can you can just feel the decaville end between your fingers. And this is what's going to give your bag completed look of a sandwich bag. Right, and on the back as well. So, 
bag. I folded the main bag. So you can see oh, how that gives you a, a pleated. Well, hopefully, you can see. A bit difficult to see actually. Anyway, so I've done the main bag panels, front and back, and then we've got our own top here. So we're going to fold in. This is going to, um, when the bag is complete, the top of the roll panel is going inside the bag. I'll just show you. Like this along the seam allowance. So we also need to fold in this top panel here but not the second one that's going inside the bag and we're just going to follow the grain of the fabric and the line of the bag to do that. I'm doing that by eye. And we're going to top stitch these pleats in place starting here At the, um, at the seam allowance, the seam between the two roll top panels. So start here, stitch down. You're not going to be able to get right into the corner of your bag, but get as far as you can. And repeat that for all four pinned edges. And when we've done that, I'll show you how to add the top of the closure. You're going to have to think about your straps on the back panels so that they don't get in the way. But let's do the front pleated panels first. Just be really careful with your fabric and making sure it, you don't catch a piece you don't want. So I've lengthened my adjustable strap as long as I can in order to be able to pull the strap out of the way. Not the neatest top stitching I've ever done. I hope 
and you can see how that's created pleats on the side of the side of the bag. I'm going to repeat for the second side. So now the pleats are in the bag. You can see how they're stitched on the sides here. We're going to add the top of the closure, the buckle. So this will be um, folded inside the top of the roll top panels. I'm not going to do that for reasons that will be obvious in a sec. Um, so let's just attach the buckle and work out its positioning. Now, obviously you want to make sure that's central again. So that's five and a half inches on the side. So you're going to hand stitch that in place. And that's going to be easier to do if you're not holding your panel in. Needle. Uh. I need to get that central point and I'm going to hand stitch that in place So I'm just going through the one layer of fabric, which is why I didn't fold my inner roll top panel inside the bag because I didn't want to stitch that by accident. So I've stitched my second side of the buckle in place and stitched it. Let's see how the bag closes. Quick word about this buckle. I um live in the UK, I ordered this online, it did come from China so it took a while to come, it's 11 inches long I have yet to source a local source in the UK um, so yeah, it took a few weeks for it to arrive but it does depend where you live in the world and what you can find access to obviously you don't use, need to use this type of buckle, you could buy a different type of fastening so now we're going to create the lining of the bag. The first thing we're going to do is make a slip pocket to go on the inside of the bag. So get your slip pocket piece of fabric, fold it in half. I love a slip pocket, I always use them for my mobile phone. Pin your fabric together. So you're going to stitch down one long edge and one short edge. Trim the corners and turn right side out and press. So once you've pressed it, you've got a raw edge, we're going to turn that in. And once you've got it to your satisfaction, you're going to press that as well. We're going to place the pocket two and five eighths of an inch down from the top and four inches in from the side with your raw edge pressed in towards the bottom of your panel. Pin that in place and then stitch down the side along the bottom up the side. Make sure you back stitch at the top for each side panel. So now we've sewn our slip pocket onto our lining. We are going to mark the pleat marks for the lining fabric. So I like to use the tailor's ruler, I find it really easy because you can see through it. We're going to mark one and a half inches in from the outer edge. Okay. 
or both pieces of lining fabric. Right, now we've done that, I'm going to place some right sides together. So we're going to join the lining fabrics together and box corners but we need to leave a turning gap along the bottom here for the bag. So I am only going to sew in half an inch, an inch in from my marked line on the bottom on both sides. So now we've stitched our side seams and we've got our marked edges we're going to box the corners like we did for the main body of the bag. So we're pressing the two seams to meet each other. Find a pin. To check that these align. Repeat for the other side. Right, so now we need to mark a stitch line, we'll do it by eye, whichever you prefer, but you're joining up your two marked lines, mimics the edge of your Decaville on your outer fabric. And it should be the same width, so when you install your lining, it fits perfectly. Right, so I'm going to stitch the across here and the same on the other side and then I'm going to trim the seam allowance. So I've turned my lining right side out, my bag is right side out. Let me show you how we're going to join the two things together. It's a little bit of a faff, well not a faff, just different to how you've done bags before probably. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn in this raw edge by three eighths of an inch and give it a really good press all the way round and then we are going to place the lining inside and we're going to pin the two edges together so we have one very long piece of fabric. So I've, I've pressed in that edge and we're going to align the raw edges and seam allowance, seam, side seams and we're going to pin in place.
because you don't want your pins going through more than one side. Back. So let me show you how I'm going to stitch this. We're going to gather up the fabric through the lining gap and put it over the arm of the sewing machine. Until we have got that seam under the presser foot. Yes, you can see that there. Yeah. And then we're going to gradually, slowly, just stitch round. So you top stitched that seam, so you've got one very long bag now. So we're going to turn it the wrong side out so we can put the pleats into the lining so that they pleat the right way. They need to pleat the opposite direction to the outer bag. Right, we're getting there. So, just like we did on the outer bag, we need to put these pleats in. So we're going to fold all along that marked line. Just like you did on the lining, you're going to envisage that line continuing onto the panel for the rolled top. Remember, you've got four of these to do. So once you've pinned your four pleats in place, like you did before, you're going to top stitch just along the edge just to hold that fold in place and do that for all four pinned pleats. So now you've sewn those pleats in, turn your bag to the right side out. So we're so nearly there now, we're just going to finish this turning gap here. I'm going to fold and press my edges in and then top stitch it. So there you can see how I folded those edges in and pinned it. So that is one bag finished so we're just going to insert the lining and the top of the roll oh it's getting in the way roll net into the bag. So I'm pushing my corners in to meet each other. Right, the top of your net bag 
is along this join between the two roll neck panels your inner lining I don't know if you can see that you know I don't think you can but it pleats just like your outer bag does so the plan is this is your fold over The roll neck folds over and fastens. Then on the back, you've got your top handle and your adjustable straps. Thanks for watching. Press the like button below. If you've got any questions, add them below. And don't forget to subscribe for further free bag patterns. Thank you for watching.